Hey folks, uh, I'm back again and today we're looking at a Ford Duratec 24 valve V6 uh, and it's on a Ford product. It's a Ford engine, it's on a Mercury Sable uh, and I'm looking at the serpentine belt today. Uh, I did a video just recently on how to remove the serpentine belt which is right here with just a conventional rag. It's a pretty neat trick. Uh, I thought it was certainly worth showing folks how to use it. Uh, then afterwards I had an afterthought and I said why don't I just show people how to use the conventional tools uh, Even though it is a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, there is some mis misinformation out there um, You know basically, uh, you know what my shop manual tells me to do is take a 15 millimeter socket put it on the bolt uh, on the tensioner uh, pulley and rotate it back. Well, that sounds pretty simple and in most cases it is but it's really tight in here. As you look down there, it is tight. And the only way I, I have ever been able to get in there and do it with that suggested process is to use a serpentine belt tool. And it's a specialty tool, and I'll show you what it is. It's right here. And uh, this particular one comes with various sockets, some crow's feet, and this long, um, it's basically a, a super thin breaker bar. Um, it calls for using a 15 millimeter. You'd put it on here, you'd pop your belt off. Just for comparison, I am showing you a conventional socket, 15 millimeter, 3 8 drive, just for comparison. And you can see it's a little bit longer, uh, so you do pick up about an eighth to 3 sixteenths of an inch if you use the tools that come with this kit. Um, now, recently, uh, I have not been able to make this work because I changed my tensioner out. Uh, the tensioner is an aftermarket tensioner and it's just a little bit thicker and this tool uh, will not fit in there. There's too much interference so I did find a way around that. There is a workaround that the manual disappointingly uh, didn't share so I'm going to share that with you now. Uh, and the trick is there is a 3 8 drive hole on that tensioner and that allows you to use this tool directly in that hole to rotate the tensioner and pop your belt off. Now um, since that is a standard drive you could use a simple tool like this which is just a breaker bar or you could use your conventional ratchet. Uh, most people at home have one of these. Uh, if you want a little more leverage, you can take a just this is just a simple deep well socket with a long extension on there. And you can just slide it on there. Now you have a little more leverage. So you have a little more control. So uh, that's kind of the trick. Um, now again on this vehicle it is difficult to get at everything. Um, what I'm going to do is show you where that is located. If I view down in this direction, uh, the tension arm is right down there. Okay, we're looking on the back side of the power steering pump uh, on the inside of your belt. So you're going to go right down there with your tool. Okay. Okay, for those of you that would like a little bit more of a visual, I am looking at the tensioner uh, through a very small opening. Uh, I'm looking between the power steering pump reservoir and the coolant overflow reservoir from the passenger side fender. And you can see that's the tensioner. You see the square drive. And just below it, you see the mounting bolt, uh, which is a Torx bolt for the uh, tension arm. Okay folks, uh, what I'm showing you here is the placket under the hood that shows the belt routing for this particular car. This, um, your car should have one, but if not, what you want to do before you take the belt off is note the routing and just sketch it out on a piece of paper. Uh, sometimes I've seen people uh, dive into this, take the belt off, and get a little confused as to how the, the new belt is supposed to be routed. So that's something just to make sure you have before you take the belt off. Now I'm going to show you how uh, 
I'm going to use this breaker bar and remove the belt. Okay, you can use any one of those three tools that I showed earlier. Um, I'm going to use the breaker bar. Now I'm going to slide the, the breaker bar on the back side of the power steering pump on the inside of the serpentine belt. I'll slide it down and then with my other hand I'm going to have to feel around and guide it into the square hole. There you go. It's in now. You can hear it snap in. It takes a little bit of practice. Uh, now just for leverage I'm going to use this uh, socket with extension over the handle. I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise or back towards me. It's going to hit the, the pulley on the power steering pump and that's plenty. That's all you need. So there you go. The belt is now off. I'm just going to release the tension here. I'm just going to slowly let that go back. And I'm going to leave that in place. It's just a lot easier uh, leaving that in place. It won't be in your way. Now typically at this point um, I would have uh, the car jacked up. I would have the passenger side wheel taken off uh, to make it easier to access the lower pulleys. You may want to remove some of the uh, fender, uh, the fender cover. Um, if you don't have a helper, sometimes it's easier when you're putting the new belt on to uh, tape it in place on the lower pulleys because as you, as you work your way up, uh, sometimes it can pop its what pop off the pulley and it gets a little frustrating you'll be going back and forth a few times till you get the hang of it so the tape method is kind of a neat trick um, it's always best if you have a helper though and uh, it will go pretty quick okay so um, now just to get it back on as I said you'd start at the bottom and work your way up you get it onto the uh, the lower pulley, the crankshaft pulley, your air conditioner pulley, your alternator pulley, and around your tensioner and your water pump. Okay, once you get it to this point, again you pull your tool forward and you can slide it back up. Okay, give a quick inspection visually just to see you got everything in place. Sometimes a little light helps. Yeah, it looks like I got everything in place. Oh, no, the alternator isn't quite right. Let's kick it in. Okay, I just felt it go in. And now I'm going to release it. Another quick inspection with your light. Everything looks like it's cool and in place. All right, we'll remove the tool. And you'd be home free. Uh, obviously you'd put the wheel back on and start the engine up. Just make sure it tracks okay and you're good to go. Uh, so I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. I hope I showed you a few nuances that would make it easier for you next time you take this on. And uh, if you've never done this before, I hope this has given you enough confidence to do it yourself.